Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if this is not your first time, you already know what we're about to do. Every week, I use a tarot spread to dive into ideas and questions related to living an intentional life. And this week is the same as every week. I'm using the same set of decks that I used last week, yeah? Um, the Child of the Universe Oracle and the True Black Tarot, along with inquiry cards to ask questions. So, let's take a look at the spread. It's already been laid. These are gorgeous decks, aren't they? And I think they look very well together. They have a similar aesthetic. Do you agree? Do you think they have a good matching aesthetic? If you're curious about who created them, there will be information at the end of the video as to the names of the creators. And there will be links below the video to where you can go if you're interested in purchasing these decks yourself. So friends, just as last week, these, this is a fairly large spread. What I'm going to do is we'll look at the six center cards together first, briefly, and then we'll split it up into the top line and the bottom line. And then we'll look at the four questions around the center of the spread. So friends, let's take a look at that center group of six cards. So looking at these six cards, the thing that struck me the most is the liminal space card. To me, that is the overarching theme of this read, and we'll dive into that in just a moment. Also, on the right side, we have Neptune and Leo. Yeah, To me, that's something like saying Neptune in Leo for this spread, which is an interesting concept. Um, Neptune in Leo. Leo, the creative, the playful, the energetic sign of the zodiac. One of my favorites, perhaps because I'm a Leo. My sun sign is Leo. But Neptune in Leo. Neptune is a very spiritual and um, mystical planet. In the Leo sign gives it a very interesting twist, a turn, connecting our spirituality with our playfulness. Having those connected with a liminal space is a very, very interesting idea. It may help us get an idea of how we can traverse these liminal spaces. And I think that is basically the idea of this entire spread, is how we can traverse the liminal space. So friends, let's look at the first line of three cards. These cards are a very interesting line. They show us what the focus, perhaps, of the week of times like this can be. And what do we do? We start with the liminal space card, and then we have Shower of Abundance, and then we have Neptune. Very interesting progression, but let's spend a little bit time of time with liminal space. Liminal space, what is that? What does that mean? Have you heard of the idea of liminal space before? If you are here, you, I'm, I'll bet that you probably have heard the idea of liminal space. Now, liminal space, liminal, comes from the Latin word, limen, which means threshold. And it's used often to describe the threshold between two different states. Uh, a common um, threshold time that people use as an example is rites of passage. For example, the rite of passage between being a child and being an adult. That time in between when you are neither child nor adult is a liminal space. It's that time where you're traversing, leaving behind the old, and getting ready for the new. It's often considered as a, some, as a kind of void, 
when we're speaking spiritually or in ritual practice. It's considered a kind of empty space, which is why the card is an empty space. Um, it's also used for a psychology, and limen in psychology is the point at which a stimulus can be felt. Yeah, the limen, that point where a stimulus can be felt. Below the limen, it cannot be felt. Above the limen, it can be felt. A stimulus, for example, a stimulus against your skin. Yeah, stroking your skin. If you can feel it, it's above the limen. If you cannot feel it, then it's below the limen, if your nerves are working. Yeah? Um, cold, for example. There might be a point where you don't really notice cold, and then it gets just cold enough where you start to feel cold. That is crossing the threshold, of sen the sensory threshold, the limen. And living an intentional life, there are times, many times, I believe, when we feel like we are in a liminal space, when we are not exactly at the place that we are, have manifested or are experiencing the manifestation of what we, are, we have created vibrationally, but we've left behind what we're, it's time to have left behind. Now we're in a liminal space. We haven't crossed the threshold into the new phase or the new experience in our progression as we follow the powerful and energetic stream of intention, that liminal space. So what do we do? It's, the liminal space is not an indication that something is going wrong. It's not an indication that we're not moving either, because to get to the other side, we need to cross the liminal space. So what can we do? This card suggests first that we experience the liminal space, that we sit in silence. Meditation is a great way to, to traverse liminal spaces. Limit, meditation is a great daily practice, even when you're in the middle of the chaotic beginnings of a new manifestation. Med meditation practice is always good, but it is particularly good when we're in the middle of a liminal space, when we're in the middle of a void. It's a good time to remember the creative possibilities. Yeah? The liminal space is a time of potential, potentiality. It's a time where we are able to create more energetically so that we can have more manifestation in the future. It's a time for faith. It's a time for inspiration. Now, inspiration is very difficult to feel in the middle of the busy, hectic um, times when we're working with our manifestations in the physical realm. These liminal spaces are a great time for us to reconnect with our inspiration, to perhaps move closer to a, a time of enlightenment, a, a feeling of enlightenment. Now, so in our meditation and out, as we are mindful, as we use mindfulness practices in these liminal spaces, we can begin to feel our inspiration more strongly. We can begin to feel a, a closer connection with the now, because there are much fewer distractions. And that is the time of enlightenment. That is our process of enlightenment. Enlightenment is a process. And for some of it, it can be a snap, instant thing that somebody wakes up and realizes that they are in the moment, they are in the present, and that this present moment is all there is. However, for many of us, it's more of a process of shedding, and we can shed a lot in liminal spaces, and that is the purpose of liminal spaces, to shed what is past so that we can move forward into what will come as we flow with 
the current of our intention through this liminal space. We're not not moving when we're in the liminal space. It's not a time of being stuck. It just doesn't feel as... We don't feel the movement as strongly when we're in the middle of a void. But we're still moving. That's a good thing to remember, that we are still moving. And this is also a good time to remember that we want to avoid doing for the sake of doing. We can do when we're in the middle of a liminal space. It's not a time where we have to cut off all activity by any means. If we feel inspired to do something, for goodness sakes, do it. But this is not the time to do, to get over the liminal space. It's not the time to do so that we are distracted from the liminal space. We're not doing for the sake of doing. However, if we feel called to do, if we feel the inspiration, the urge to do, rising up from within the liminal space, then, of course, do. That's the flow of intention. However, grabbing your oar and trying to get out of the liminal space as quickly as possible is not flowing with intention. It's fighting the flow of intention. So, in the liminal space, we want to avoid doing for the sake of doing. We want to do because we can't help doing. When we can't help doing, that's when we want to do, especially when we are in this liminal space. Because we can have the, the itchy feeling that I've got to do something when we're in the middle of this quiet time. We want to avoid that. We want to be present to the moment. And then the next card is shower of abundance. In the liminal space, we can remember that even though we might not see it at the present moment, we are blessed. We are blessed with a shower of abundance. Our desires have already been met, even though we have not reached their manifestation. They've been met. Now, every desire that we have, that we have created in the energetic state, has already been met. We're just moving towards it. And perhaps we want to remember to have faith in that. We want to remember to listen to our guts, yeah? to our intuition in this liminal time. As we meditate, as we experience the now, we also want to experience our internal state. Our internal state is going to give us indications of where we want to go, which direction to move in, what we want to do. Like I said, that inspired action will come from a gut feeling. In the calm, we want to visualize our prosperity. That's part of the shower of abundance, visualizing it. Allowing ourselves to daydream. And remember, there are many forms of abundance. There are many forms of prosperity. Some of it can be cash, sure. Some of it can be the air we are breathing. The air we are breathing is abundant. Some of it can be the light coming from the sun. Some of it could be our health, whatever our health state. If we're breathing, we are blessed. And if we are not breathing, we are blessed because we remember that life never ends. We move from this body, from life to life, from life in this state to another state. And that is also abundance. We have an abundance of life. So in this liminal time, remembering that Though we may not be able to see it around us as clearly, we are in a shower of abundance as we move through to the next stage of our development. And then the next card, Neptune. Beautiful Neptune. Neptune is the card of spirituality. It's the card of spirituality and connection. Because our spirituality sometimes can feel like it's our own thing, something that we are doing on our own, especially when we're in a liminal space. We might not feel that connection as easily, but we want to remember that everything, our 
physical experience and our non-physical experience is not solitary. It's united. It's united. I'm sorry. United. It's, there, it's a oneness. We are connected. And Neptune reminds us of that connection, that interconnection, that unbreakable unity of all that there is. And that spiritual experience of Neptune is nothing more, is especially, is especially that connection. It's also compassion because as we realize that we are all one, we realize that everything that we do for the apparent other, we are doing for ourselves. Every time we share understanding and love with other, we are receiving that love and understanding for ourselves. That's part of this unity. That's part of this oneness of all existence. Neptune is the, 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 the planet of mysticism. Yeah? And what better time to explore our mysticism than in a liminal space? It's, it's the prime time for mysticism and for loose, loosening our grip on ego, allowing ego to, to quiet, not shutting it up, not forcing it down. Every time we resist ego, when we try to push it away, it becomes stronger and comes back with twice or thrice the force. We don't want to get rid of ego. We want to treat our ego. We want to resolve ego's issues, but we don't want to eliminate, eliminate ego. Ego is our friend in this physical universe. We want to befriend ego, treat ego, allow ego to heal, but we also want to loosen our grip on it and let it set for a while when we're in this liminal space, when we are sitting with Neptune, when we are sitting with our mysticism and our spiritual connection, we want to allow ego to rest. We want to feel that deep emotional space, that space of intuition, that space of knowing, that deep knowing of the abundance that we are and that we are living in. We want to recognize that though it feels like we are moving slowly, we are exactly where we want to be and we are who we are, want to be at this moment. And when we can recognize that, that is enlightenment. That is enlightenment in the liminal space. So friends, as we move with our intention, we're going to feel these liminal spaces and they are a blessing. They're a blessed time for us to reconnect, to re-establish our mystical connection, our spiritual connection with our higher, our, I don't want to say higher, it's not a higher self, our eternal self our non-physically focused self, with our divine self, with our, the divine, with the divine oneness of all that there is. This is a time for connection and recognizing and remembering the abundance and that every one of our desires has been met. And we're just flowing through them, flowing through to them, flowing through the liminal space to them. If we allow ourselves to move with intention, we can always resist. We can always resist intention. And that's when we start doing for the sake of doing. So friends, this top line of cards, I think you've got the sense of it. Yeah, Liminal space is a blessing. And perhaps if you are living in a liminal space now, this is the time to enjoy it and to take advantage of it for the blessing that it is. Let's look at the second set of three cards, what we are standing on. This line of three cards is showing what we are standing on. What is our base? And the first card is uh, growth and support. Growth and support in the middle of our liminal space time. We want to remember that we are supported and we are growing. It may seem like we're moving slowly, like we're not growing as fast as we wanted to, but we are standing on a base of growth and support. Remember, remember what it was like when you were three years old or five years old 
Or, depending on your age, if you're like me, try to remember perhaps when you were 20, or 35, or 40, or 50. Yeah? We have grown so much, and that is the base that we are standing on. We have grown, and we have been supported by this universe. We have been supported by this planet. We have been supported by people around us. We have received so much support. And when we are in this liminal time, it is good to remember that we are supported both by people, both by the physical, the physical universe, and by the powerful flow of intention. We are supported by our intention. Now, our intention is like a mighty river, and we're on it, and it supports us like we are supported in water. Sure, we can fight it. We can bundle ourselves up and sink to the bottom if we want to, but we are supported if we allow ourselves to be supported. So, what is this first card telling us about growth and support? It's telling us that we are supported, that we are in an abundant universe. Remember, shower of abundance. Abundance is available. We benefit from what we have. Now, yes, in liminal space, we're letting things go. But also, we have things. Yeah, we have support. We have clothes. We have bodies. We have water to drink. Depending on where you're living, you may be blessed with an abundance of water to drink. We may have an abundance of clear water flowing right into your home. You may not have that, but there may be, you may have access to water in other ways. Now, there is an abundance of air that is supporting our life. There is sunlight that is supporting us. We are benefiting from everything that we have. And yeah, we let things go. We always want to allow things to flow past us, to let things go into the past. But we always remember that we're not letting everything go. <laughs> this is, even in a little bit of space, we're not going to base zero. We still have so much that is supporting us. Also, we, this is a time for us to express our emotions. Now, the growth and support card in this deck is a reflection of the Empress in the Tarot cards. It's an Earth, Earth card. It's definitely an Earth card, but it's a time for expressing emotions. We want to allow ourselves to express ourselves when we are in a liminal space. Now, we don't have to shut down. We want to allow ourselves to express ourselves and be creation and be fertility. We are the creation. We are the fertility as we flow with intention. The next card is the first quarter of the moon. The first quarter. Yeah? We are standing on our creation. We are, we are moving forward. Whether we feel it or not, we are moving forward. Intention is impossible to resist 100%. Even if we've sunk down to the bottom, we're still moving forward. Centimeter by centimeter. Or microcentimeter by mic... What is it? Micrometer? Micrometer by micrometer. But we're still moving forward. And that's what the quarter moon is telling us, is reminding us that we are still moving forward. And to be patient. Be patient. Allow. Accept where we are. And have faith. Have belief in our personal power. Even in the middle of a void of the liminal space, we have personal power. We are magnificent creators in this universe. We are creativity. So we can remember to, to, to experience the creativity that we are in this liminal space. We want to remember that we have social bonds, even if we might not be feeling them at the moment. Yeah? We might have been feeling our social bonds have weakened or been cut by the recent pandemic, but we are still socially bonded because this is a co-creative universe. 
you are never completely alone in a physical body. And then when we leave a physical body, we are even more connected. We are even more experiencing our unity outside of these bodies. We want to, in the first quarter of the moon, also remember that our mental and emotional selves are united. Yeah? When we unite our mental and emotional selves, when we are aligned, in other words, we are even more powerful creators, and we are even more able to move through our liminal spaces with confidence. And then the next card we have Leo, my favorite sign, because it's me. Okay, my signs are reveal, my sun side is Leo, my uh, rising sign, my ascendant is Scorpio, so be careful, and my moon is Pisces, uh, which is connected to Neptune, which is why I, I love seeing this Neptune and Leo together, because that's part of me in a sense. So Leo, who is Leo? Yeah, loving. Leo is a loving sign. It's an ambitious sign. It's also a loyal and confident sign. So as we move through our liminal spaces, we want to remember to be our loving selves. We want to remember to be our ambitious selves. Even when we're meditating, we have a baseline ambition without attachment. Yeah, and we have an ambition to keep moving forward, to keep creating in these physical bodies, to take the next breath. The, our next breath is, can be an ambition. Yeah, we want to be ambitious in our liminal spaces without being attached to outcomes, without being attached to progress or speed. We want to have our ambitions. We also want to be confident in who we are, where we are. Because as we experience our confidence and we show love and we have our ambitions, we will shine radiantly in our liminal space. We want to feel and express our warmth and our enthusiasm in the liminal space. Be the bright light in the dark. We want to be generous. Again, remember that compa com compassion. As we are generous to others, we also receive. Now, this is not really a transaction. This is not really a transaction like we think of, I'll give you $5, you give me that. Not that kind of transaction. We will receive even if we are not generous. That's not how the universe works. This is not a, a bartering universe. However, the more generous we are, the more open we are. The more open we are, the more we are able to receive. So generosity is also a state of receptivity. It's when we are guarded, when we are closed, when we are greedy, that we become less receptive. The more generous we are, the more receptive we are. And so the more we give in generosity, not in barter, but in generosity, the more open we are to receive. And we want to be open in our liminal spaces. We also want to be playful. Yeah? Our liminal spaces are a time for us to be playful and creative. We can do that. In the middle of a void, we have, in the middle of our liminal space, we have the space to do stuff that we might not have the space or the, the time for when we are busy with other stuff. Now, when we get this new creation, perhaps a new job, perhaps a new relationship, perhaps a new art project that we're, we're engrossed in, perhaps a, a new home to move into. I remember when I just moved into my new home recently. It took me a lot of mental space to accustom myself to this new space in this new city, in this new environment. And I didn't have that much space for other things like playfulness and creativity. In the liminal space, we do have space for creativity and playfulness. And we want to remember that. We want to be Leo in the dark. 
We want to be leal in our liminal spaces, to be generous and loyal and creative and playful. That will help get us through our liminal spaces much more beautifully, in much more open and allowing states to flow with our powerful current of intention. Enjoying the liminal space is the way to get through it. But remember, we're not being playful to get through it. If we do something, anything, in order to get through it more quickly, in order to get out of this liminal space, we're not going to get out of it. We're just distracting ourselves from it. We want to move through the liminal space openly, playfully, creatively, enjoying it and having trust in the abundance and our movement. So friends, this spread is beautiful and an important lesson for living life intentionally. Now remember, we still have four questions to ask. Let's look to the first question and the tarot card that's answering it. The first question that we're asking this spread is who can help? What do you think? Do you feel like when you're in a liminal space, you've got to fare the space alone? You've got to pass through it all on your own with your own power. Remember that this is a co-creative universe. Remember that we are never alone. We cannot be alone. It's impossible to be alone. Because there is only unity in this universe and beyond this universe. This is a unity experience. This is a oneness. So, there is always help. So, who can help? Who can help us when we are in our liminal space, when we're trying to be Leo in the void? And isn't it beautiful that the card that appeared to answer this question is the King of Wands, a total Leo, confident card, impassioned. Yeah, the King of Wands is a leader. The King of Wands is passionate. The King of Wands is fire and able to use their fire. The King of Wands is charismatic and honest. The King of Wands is honest. One thing the King of Wands is not is a man. Well, the King of Wands can be a man. It can be a one woman. It can be any gender or non-gender. Remember these court cards do not have to be read as sexual identities. The King of Wands is the one who is fully in charge of their element, the fire, the passion, the leadership. So, again, Leo, yeah, describing the Leo character in the void. Now, who so? Is there someone in your life who could be? that king of wands for you, be it a man or a woman or neither? Could you find that king of wands within yourself? There's another question. So who can help? It could be another person. It could be a person in life, I will say in real life, for example, someone that you can meet face-to-face -face or online that you can interact with. It could be someone a little removed, for example, someone in a book or someone in a video, someone on the radio who you would not interact with directly, but who could be your leader, who could be your inspirer, who could be your charism, who could show you that. It could be a spiritual being. It could be God, Brahman, the um, divine feminine, whatever you want to call that fiery, passionate, leader-ing spiritual being for you. 
It could be what you would consider a spiritual guide or guardian angel. Or it could be me, you. We could be our own king of wands in that time. Remember, we could discover our Leoness and become that king of wands for ourselves. So, allow ourselves to receive help. When we are in this liminal space, we can allow ourselves to receive help. Open ourselves. As we are being generous, we can receive and receive the help of a King of Wands figure, whatever that manifestation is for you. Because that will help be that shining light. It will help be our compass to stay on course with the powerful flow of intention for us. Friends, let's look at the next question for, these, for this spread. In this question we are asked, what needs attention? And the answer to this question is also beautiful. Though perhaps in a different way than the King of Wands was a beautiful answer to who can help. The Five of Cups is seen by many as a somewhat negative card, but it is a beautiful answer because it tells us where we want to place our attention. The Five of Cups is a card of disappointment or regret. So what do we need to pay attention to in this liminal space? We want to pay attention to those things that we have felt disappointed about, what we have felt regret about, because we can learn from those things. We want to learn from our past experiences, and we also want to be able to let them go. So in this liminal space, this is the time of letting go of the things that are ready to let be let go of. And that is what we want to give some attention to in the liminal space. We want to give attention to the things that have disappointed us, the things that we may regret. Learn from those things. Learn the lesson that we wanted to learn when we experienced those things. And then let them go. If a lot of our, the time when we're, there's something that's um, disappointing or that we regret, when we want to live intentionally, we want to um, feel joy, feel love, so that we can feel the flow of our intention. A lot of the times we tend to go into what some people call spiritual bypassing, which is to ignore, to repress, or to hide those same things that we are not happy about, the things that we might feel regret or self-disappointment about. But remember, if we're repressing them, we're still carrying them with us. We're still carrying them with us, and they are dragging us down. Instead, what we want to do when we have come into this liminal space is to give some attention to those things. That doesn't mean focusing on them endlessly. We don't want to become our regrets. We don't want to become our dis disappointments. We don't want to identify ourselves with those things. I am the one who was betrayed. I am the betrayed one. I am the failure. I am the, the, the victim. We don't want to create that person for ourselves. But we want to give attention to those hurts, those regrets, those disappointments, so that we can let them go. And the liminal space is that time for letting those things go, to giving attention and letting them flow past us. Also remembering that in this card you'll see that there are three cups that are in bad condition, in bad shape. One is completely shattered. Two more are cracked, but two more are still okay. Remember that card that we of growth and support. We are standing on our growth. We are carrying what is working for us ahead with us. In the liminal space, we're not getting rid of everything. We still have two cups left. We still have two very viable cups of 
blessings and emotion and love and joy that we are carrying with us and remembering that we still have those two cups to carry with us through the liminal space. We let the broken cups go and we move forward. We want to be ready to move on. And to be ready to move on, we need to be able to, ready to let go and then let go and then move on. Naturally, we don't, again, we don't want to deliberately move on before we are naturally moving on. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? We don't want to force ourselves forward. We will naturally move on. So let the things go and allow ourselves to move on and not get weighed down by the broken cups. We want to remember the full cups and carry them forward with us. So that's what needs our intention, attention, in intention, in living intentional lives, in moving through liminal spaces. That's one thing we want to give attention to. Where are we regretting? Where are we disappointing it? And letting them go and carrying the whole cups forward with us. Friends, let's look at the third question. This third question is perfect. What can I give? Remember the generosity of the Leo. What can I give? And the answer to this question is a bit surprising, is it not? We have the page of coins. What can I give? Now, this page of coins is not saying you've got to give your cash. Well, giving, uh, tithing is a wonderful practice. I'm not saying don't tithe. I'm not saying don't be generous with your financial resources if you can. But that's not the answer to this question. The question of what can I give is your page of coins-ness. Your inner page of coins is what we can give to the world. Because when we are in our liminal space, we are learning. And that's what the page of coins is. The enthusiasm to learn. We can share our enthusiasm to learn as we are in our liminal space. The excitement of creating in the physical world is something we can share, something we can give to the world. Our excitement of being these physical bodies in the world creating as we flow with our current of intention is something we can share with those around us and the world of, at large. We want to remember that we can have interest in studying in the liminal space. Our, our studying, our growth, our intellectual growth, our spiritual growth can come from studying and developing our skills. And as we study, as we learn, as we develop our skills, we are even better able to share with the world. We can give those skills. We can give our knowledge, our wisdom, once we have grown, as we grow, through this liminal space. So, what can we give? We can give of ourselves. And the best way to give of ourselves is to grow and develop and evolve. And one way to do that is to study and to practice and to study and to practice and to enjoy all of that and to create and to enjoy all of that. And that Leo's, again, I'm coming back to the Leo, that Leo's attitude of enjoyment and playful creativity is part of that, the page of wands. And we can share that with the world generously. Let's look at the fourth question. The fourth question is what inspires us? And that is the perfect final question for the liminal space. Because it's finding that inspiration that lights up the liminal space for us and allows us to move perhaps more quickly through the liminal space. Our inspiration is what moves us with our intention. It's what perhaps speeds up our boats on the river of our intention, is our inspiration. And what is the answer to our inspiration? It's the Two of Cups, another emotional card. The Two of Cups is the, cup of, is the card of love. 
So our inspiration in the liminal space is our love. Which is why meditation is a wonderful practice, in, especially in these liminal spaces. Reaching for, opening to our love is our inspiration. And then sharing it, because love wants to be shared. Love wants to be connected. And the Two of Cups is our connection card. It's the card of interpersonal love. It's our card of loving connection. It's our card of intimate sharing. We want to share intimately when we're in our liminal space. And we have the space and time to do that when we are there. It's sharing intimate bonds with others. It's friendship. It could be a romantic relationship. It could be another love relationship. It could be a friendship. Remember that love in Greek has five different meanings. Now there are what? There's platonic love. There's erotic love. There's the love of a parent and child. There's the love of friends. Um, there's a love of, um, of hobbies, of interests. There are five different words for love in Greek. And to remember that this Two of Cups is that diversity of love as well, and sharing that diversity of love with another or with others. It doesn't have to be just one other person, but it's that interpersonal connection. Me and thou. I and thou. Subject and object connected because there is no separation. And that connection is love. And that love is our creation. And that creation is what moves us through and is the next step as we move through our liminal space. It's love. So, in our liminal space, what inspires us to keep moving with the powerful flow of our intention is love. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced how much more open to the flow and the, the current of intention you feel when you are experiencing love, when you are sharing love. That is our inspiration. That is our inspiration. So friends, there are going to be times, hopefully many times, when we are experiencing liminal spaces. Sometimes the liminal space can be large, sometimes they can be small. Have you experienced a liminal space recently? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Tell me what liminal spaces you're experiencing now or you have experienced recently. Let's chat about that. Also, hit the like button if you feel inspired. Share this video with someone who you think might get benefit from it. It would be wonderful if this video were to get out into the world. And comment again. I'd love to hear from you. Remember, there will be information about these decks in just a moment. And before I go, as always, now and always, I wish you love, love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness in the liminal space and always. Thank you.